Hey guys, James Wilson Taylor here for Rock Sound. It's another of our video calls. We are catching up with everybody while we're all stuck at home at the minute. But I'm delighted to say Mr. Mark Hoppus is on the line. How are you, Mark? I'm fantastic. Just great. Everything's perfect. Couldn't ask for a better day. The world's such a lovely place at the minute, isn't it's it? It's so great to be here. I'm so stoked to get to experience 2020 in all of its glory, all the, all the great things that are happening around our planet right now. Absolutely. What a horrible, horrible time we're having. But we progress, we try, we strive on as ever. And uh, I will start this by the same way I've started all these really was just to say, you know, I hope you and your family, you've all been keeping well as you can in this very, very strange time we're in. Uh, kind of generally, how has your lockdown been these last few months? You've been keeping busy? Uh, well, for, I think for probably the first two months, I, I just felt like I'd, I'd been hit with a baseball bat and I was just in a daze. Like I couldn't do anything at all. I couldn't concentrate. I couldn't read a book. Uh, like we just sat there at our house and looked at our phones and looked at each other and tried to figure out what to do and tried to stay as productive as possible. Uh, and then I think, you know, probably in about June, we actually started doing work. And, uh, you know, I've been writing songs and doing my uh, radio show with Apple Music and trying to stay in touch with my friends and family as best I possibly can in this weird way where, you know, you talk to people over like this, over Zoom or FaceTime or, you know, Animal Crossing or whatever, whatever it is. Yeah, all the technology coming into play, just whatever works, whatever works, keep that communication going, right? It's got to yeah. be done, man. Got to be done. Um, well, let's start with that radio show, man. I've been listening. I've been really impressed overall with what Apple are doing, actually. I'm not paid to say this, by the way, but I really, really <laughs> like that update. I love all these artist shows. been listening to yours in particular, of course. Really, really enjoying it. Talk to me about um, getting approached to do that and how you kind of got involved with this, this new side of Apple Music. So at the end of last year, Zane Lowe, who we've known forever and is like just one of the best people in music. I mean, he is such a fan of music and knows everything about all, like he has an encyclopedic knowledge of musicians and artists. He came to my house and he said, we have this idea. We want to, uh, you know, we're going to open up all these different different radio uh, spots. And we want you to be in charge of the one that kind of covers emo, pop punk, punk rock, alternative, grunge, like just the kind of the alternative rock space. And I was really honored. And, you know, we started talking about it more early last year or uh, early this year. And then we started taping in March and then the pandemic happened. So they, were, they pushed it back. And then just as we were about ready to launch again in May and June, then the Black Lives Matter moment happened. And Apple was like, this is too important. Uh, a movement to interrupt the space with uh, an ad campaign and trying to take away any attention at all from what the world was trying to set straight. And, you know, now that it's August, they, they launched it and I'm really stoked to be part of it. Yeah, it's really, really cool. And I just like that, like you say, you know, there's, there's people like yourself and people across all genres of music. And it really is like giving you your specialist subject and being able to explore it a bit more in depth. It's really, really cool. And uh, of course, you've already had some guests on there and stuff at the time recording. We've heard a couple episodes. So, you know, Gasgarth was on there. You had uh, yep. Tyson from All American Rejects. Have you got, are you just kind of ringing up yeah, I mean, obviously friends of yours, but have you got a wish list of anyone you want to get on the show as time goes on? Oh, I have everybody. You know, I get to interview Tony Hawk tomorrow. Oh, wow. I, you know, because they're, they're relaunching the Tony Hawk Pro Skater video game. So I'm interviewing him for, the, for those games and uh, interviewed the Madden Brothers the other day. I, I interviewed uh, Gavin from Bush. Like, I've, I've gotten to interview a lot of people already, and I look forward to talking to a lot of uh, different people. You know, I've always loved talking with other musicians and artists and, and people about music and how music affects them and, and their lives. So I kind of get to do that now with my radio show and just play songs that I like and, you know, talk with my friends and it's awesome. I love it. Yeah, really, really fun project, man. I you know, encourage people to check it out if you haven't already. Really, really cool listen. And then uh, the other side to your work, of course, we've had a bit of new music from Blink, which is very exciting. Yep. Quarantine came out, obviously written in this time. Uh, how did that uh, kind of come together? Were you guys working remotely at the time or did you manage to kind of get together and work on bits? No, I did everything. Uh, that song here, right here at, at, in my studio. Uh, so when Travis went out to Salt Lake City, to do the Post Malone Nirvana set that they did. He was hanging out with Brian Lee and they kind of had, they were talking about an idea for a song and Travis sent me like the basic uh, arrangement of a song that they had started. And I wrote the words, 
and played the bass and sang it uh, here at my house. And we all, we put it together all remotely. Wow, very cool. Yeah, it's, it's interesting hearing how people have adapted uh, to recording when obviously you can't necessarily be in the same room together. I guess that'll kind of set us all up well for the future. This is the new way of doing things, right? It is. It's, uh, I, I really miss being in the room with people and having the immediacy of like, hey, what about this? Hey, what about, oh, you know what? That was cool. Why don't we, why don't we try that? But over FaceTime and, you know, collaborating, uh, you know, sending each other files and sessions and things like that, we, we kind of can hack our way through it. And I think quarantine turned out really good. We are finishing up a bunch of other Blink songs that we've, I think we recorded for them remotely in quarantine. A couple of them we had from before. And uh, I don't know if we're gonna write more or not, but I, we're trying to get an EP of like somewhere between seven and nine songs out in the fall. Hopefully that's what we're working towards anyway. Oh, that's very cool. Yeah, we actually did one of these chats with uh, with your man John Feldman a few weeks back, and obviously he's. Oh yeah. I mean, I mean that guy's the busiest guy in music anyway, generally, but he's not slowed down. That's what I love about it. In lockdown, he's still flat out. And uh, yeah. I think what he was saying about what he's been working on with you guys, he was very, very excited. He used the word old school a few times. He said you guys mm -hmm. uh, kind of. I guess want to do something in the way that nine was very different to California. It feels like, again, you want to try something that's signature blink, but very different. He was saying, uh, is that kind of about yeah. right? Yeah, I think that's about right. I would say that, um, I would say that the music that we're writing right now, like in quarantine sounds more like take off your pants and jacket era blink 182. And, uh, the stuff from before quarantine was like, uh, nine, but even more evolved than nine. So you have some really old school stuff, some really cutting edge stuff and, and kind of everything that any Blink fan would want. That's good. To I hear. like it a lot. I, I listen to the songs over and over again. And for me, that's usually a, a good sign. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's always a good start. That's yeah. always a good place to start. Uh, so we think an EP in the fall, are you guys thinking about a full length after? I mean, I know everyone's schedules are kind of all over the place at the minute, but are you thinking that far ahead as well? I don't know. I, it's weird the way that music is released now. I feel like rock music is really the last genre to still hold on to like, we are releasing an album. We recorded an album. You know, everybody else like records a group of songs, puts them out, like a single here, a single there, always new music coming out. And uh, rock music is kind of coming out of the Stone Ages, hopefully. So I don't know. I still love the album cycle and the thought of an album, but I also love the immediacy of like, you know, recording a song, putting out three, putting out one, and then collecting them in an album later. You know, I think that uh, you know, I probably could sing every single Rihanna song to you, but I couldn't tell you how many albums she has. And I think that there are a lot of uh, artists that are like that. And, you know, I don't think that the album is the end all be all of the music industry anymore. I think it's more about streaming and about the immediacy of like, you know, uh, hip hop has had that forever. Like you I mean, mixtapes, you record something, you put it right out. And, and rock needs to catch up. So that's what we're kind of slowly getting towards, I think. That's interesting. I mean, I guess it kind of has a big benefit to fans as well, you know, where ultimately you end up getting more music and you end up getting that music sooner as well. So it kind of feels yeah. like the right move, I would say. Totally. Yeah, I think so, for sure. And speaking of Blink as well, I want to kind of reflect a little bit on a couple of things because uh, not to dwell too much on the past and milestones and all those kind of things, but it did occur to me that seeing as it was the Anima anniversary and you guys, of course, did the big tour around it and all that stuff, it means that the accompanying piece, which is, of course, the Mark, Tom and Travis show, turns 20 at the end of this year. Oh, that's um, right, huh? That's so crazy, right? And obviously, that was it such is. a huge live album. I mean, you know, the, the amount of live albums that sell that many copies and have that much of a, a kind of, you know, <laughs> devotion in the fan base is very few. So that's really cool. I just wonder, what yeah. are your kind of memories of, of that tour in particular and kind of putting together that release afterwards? It was such an amazing tour, like... You, with Enema of the State, we went from playing theaters to playing amphitheaters and arenas and just this whirlwind of like the band all of a sudden just shot out of a cannon skyrocketing to heights that we never guessed that our band would possibly ever get to. And we recorded it like full on old school with a recording truck that came out to the show in Los Angeles and the show in San Francisco. And it was nerve wracking because playing shows in LA is already nerve wracking enough because you have friends and family and agents and lawyers and label people and radio station people and the whole, it's like your wedding. Went backstage at a Los Angeles show, you're just shaking hands and, oh, hey, how's it going? And, and trying to keep everybody happy and realizing also you have to walk on stage and not only perform well, first of all, for the audience, number one, most important for the audience. Second of all, you have all your peers and contemporaries and family and everybody else there. And third of all, you're recording this 
to put out an album for. So it was just really nerve wracking for those two nights, but I love the way that it turned out. Um, you know, we, we recorded uh, the entire tour just onto like, um, the whole tour we were just recording onto DAT tapes, just a stereo, stereo bounce of, uh, of the show to a, a DAT tape. And at the end, somebody went through and listened to all the banter that Tom and I did and put together that whatever it is, 15 minutes at the end of the album of just the worst, most obscene, foul language that, uh, I mean, on that tour, Tom and I really were trying to see who could outdo the other and say the most ridiculous thing on stage. And I'm glad that it's preserved for posterity now. It's a fun contest to listen to, for sure. No, it's thanks. always fun. Never ages. It's all good. Uh, and speaking of these kind of milestones, again, I know we're kind of looking ahead here, but, you know, had a great time and a great moment to celebrate Enema. Similarly, next year will be 20 years of Take Off Your Pants and Jacket. Have you thought about whether whether it's a tour? I mean, who knows about touring these days, particularly at this mm -hmm. moment, but have you thought about any way of marking that at all? Maybe a reissue or any, I don't know. Any ideas? There? I don't know. We we really haven't started talking about that. I think we still have a year to figure it out right now. Or as far as Blink goes, we can't get together. You know, Matt takes the quarantine really seriously. I take the quarantine really seriously. Travis is a very tight knit of people that he's around. So we really haven't gotten to get together in a room and and talk about all this stuff it's more over text and trying to get this ep put together so yeah i think we'll do something rad to commemorate it i don't know if it's a tour if it's a i don't know i'm open to all ideas yeah fingers crossed something could be done anyway it'd be very very cool one to mark in a similar way for sure and uh speaking of kind of other musical projects then let's talk a little bit about simple creatures because now it's a little bit in the rear view seems to have gone great for you guys really good reception to the music and you guys you know the few times i spoke to you during that campaign you were having the best fun imagine oh, it's just such a laugh right yeah what are your, yeah. What are your kind of memories of uh, of that particular campaign uh, i mean i love simple creatures working with alex is is awesome and it's it's like a. Simple Creatures is kind of like this ongoing inside joke that the world gets to take part in. Like, you know, we make the strangest videos we can possibly think to make. We, you know, the whole, the whole concept is kind of everything opposite of what we would normally do in our other bands. And we wanted it to sound different than Blink or All Time Low. And we want to continue making music. You know, it's very difficult for, <laughs> for me and Alex to do it. They're, All Time Low is launching an album and we're in a pandemic. So, yeah, we definitely want to get back into the studio and make more music and do more rad stuff. It's just a, a matter of timing. Yeah, absolutely. No, we'd be excited to hear it. Were there any kind of songs left over from those last few sessions? I know you did a few in between the two EPs. Yeah. Right? No, there's lots. We have, we have the beginnings of another EP worth oh, of right. music. We just have to finish it up and probably write a new song or two. But yeah, we both love it. And, and it's, a, it's a labor of love and something that we do uh, outside of our normal band. So I don't, I feel like there's no limits and no rules and it's, I don't know, we can do just kind of do whatever we want. And that's what I also love about Blink. But Blink is also this giant machine that takes a long time to pivot and do things. And, and Blink is its own thing. And this is something that we do just for the love of music and being silly. Yeah, no, it definitely was cool to see how much fun you guys were having, particularly in those live shows and everything. Just, you know, it was just an absolute party vibe. I know we've said this before, yeah. but yeah, it's got to be so much fun <laughs> to put those together for sure, man. Uh, glad to hear there's more to come there. And then again, you're just, you're so busy in this time in a way, because the amount of collaborations you've been featured on recently is crazy too. We just did one of these the other week with uh, Sky from Super Whatever. Uh, he was absolutely mm -hmm. delighted. That one came together uh of course you've just been doing yeah so many kind of recently have you got any other kind of collabs in the pipeline or anyone you've been speaking to about possibly working with well right before um right before quarantine i was working with hoodie allen on a track uh for his record um i don't know where that song is at right now but you know and we did the oliver tree one and that was one that I actually recorded while we were up at our house in um in idaho we have a place up in idaho that we were we were at for a month of this quarantine and it's incredible the technology that you can just have a laptop and a little tiny interface that's about that big and a microphone and you can actually record music i, I love that music is so easily accessible now the barrier of entry to record music is so low like you know your kids are doing it in their on their laptops in their college dorms or in their garages or whatever else and it's really a it's really an exciting new world for recording yeah, absolutely. I mean, you must have a hell of a setup in your own place, I'm sure, as well. Are you kind of, have you got some kind of rudimentary stuff or have you actually got a proper studio where you are as well? Oh, uh, I mean, I have a proper studio. I have a vocal, I mean, for all the stuff that I need, I don't have a big giant live room where you can record an orchestra or, or drums or things like that. But, you know, I have 
outboard gear and good microphones and good guitars and a vocal booth and a keyboard wall and good speakers and you know uh, a lot of the stuff that we did for nine we did here in the studio and you know it, it's it's a it's great what i'm saying basically is it's great to have you know world-class gear be so small now you don't need a giant a giant studio with racks and racks and racks of compressors and things like that the, the way that plugins have advanced and whatever else you can have world-class sound just basically if you download logic you have an entire studio's worth of of everything you would need to do an album yeah real game changer that real game changer and especially in times like this we have to be separated it must be a real advantage i'm sure to have home setups that work properly. yeah yeah I'm totally man. very very true well i'll leave you with this mark because i know you got to head off shortly but uh i did want to bring up uh something you tweeted that was very controversial the other day my man and that was that the best jimmy world album of all time is clarity and i have to you know as much as i love clarity it's a great great album mm -hmm. I did have a chat with Jim Adkins the other day, and uh, he doesn't like to play favorites with his own records, but I could see the shock in his face when I told him that, uh, that this was your position. I think he's more on his more recent work side on that one. Uh, talk to me, make the right. case for clarity. Tell me why that is, in fact, the best Jimmy Eat World album. Uh, it's the best Jimmy Eat World album because, you know, we were lucky enough to play a show with Jimmy Eat World in Denver way back in the Blink days. Scott was still the drummer in the band. We played this tiny show, Jimmy Eat World, I don't know if we opened for them or they opened for us, but afterwards they gave us a cassette of what was to become Static Prevails. And I was just blown away by their songwriting. I was blown away the way that they would play guitars off of one another. Uh, Jim and Tom would like play guitars off of one another and sing different parts of songs and uh, interlacing vocal melodies and harmonies and things like that. It just blew my mind. So Static Prevails, I loved. Um, Jimmy World is why we ended up recording with Mark Trombino for Dude Ranch because we were just so enamored with the way that the Jimmy World stuff sounded. And, uh, and then when Clarity hit, it just took my brain to a whole different level. Uh, Futures was great. I love Futures. It has some amazing, like, you know, life altering songs on it. But for me, Clarity, every single song is just a no brainer. So that, that's my album for Jimmy World. That's fair. I mean, I can't really debate you on it that much, can I? I mean, I, I mean, Futures <laughs> is always going to be my number one, but it's not like I can say Clarity is bad. It's an incredible record too. So fine. Yeah, yeah. You're, I'll choosing let you between two, you're choosing between like the Mona Lisa and, uh, you know, the Venus de Milo. Like, yeah, Sistine Chapel versus Mona yeah. Lisa. Yeah, I mean, they're both okay. You know what I'm saying? It'll work. Totally. Uh, Mark, it's always a real pleasure to chat to you, man. Stay safe out there. Best of luck with the radio show. Can't wait for new Blink music. And uh, we'll see you in the UK whenever that's possible, man. Yeah, likewise, man. It's always great talking with you. Good stuff. All right, Mark, everybody. Appreciate it.